Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Megan. Morning, Terry and Julie, I suppose. Uh, and Alice there, too. Shouldn't forget. He cut his hair yet, Meg? Can do it while he's sleeping, you know. Morning, Howard. Morning, Sue. Morning, Ali. Good morning, Chaz. Morning, Gareth. Thank you for the reminder last night that I was on 10 at 10 this morning. Morning, Ness. Morning, Clive and Sandy. Morning, Marion. Hope everybody is well this morning. Suzanne and I took ourselves down to bat and ball yesterday. There's um, a lateral flow test centre opened um, that we had a, a message through from the GP about. So we went down there to give ourselves the all clear. Um, we're okay. Morning Hev, morning Vic. Morning Leslie. Oh, does he, Meg? Oh, I guess hats are going to become very fashionable <laughs> during this lockdown. Morning, Jill. Morning, Lynette. And morning, Susie Gillard. How you doing? What time have we got? What time have we got, Sam's? Two minutes. Two minutes. Good morning, Dave. Hope you and the family are all feeling better now. Good morning, Caroline. Yeah, silver lining, so Dave. Morning, Nick. Uh, morning, James. Good morning, Malcolm and Irene too. How are you both? Hope you're doing okay. Oh, that's good to hear, Dave. Thanks. Good morning, Paula. Is it streaming all right, Sam? I think I've frozen. Yeah. Do you need to refresh it? Is that better? Cool. Morning, Simon. What time we got? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It froze here. Sorry, Gareth. Just needed to refresh it. What time is it, Sam? Ten. Ten. Right, we'll get going then. Yeah, good morning everybody. Thanks for joining us again this morning. Um, this morning I want to look at the parable of the ten virgins from Matthew uh, chapter 25, uh, if you want to turn there. Um, it's one of the, the parables in a, a body of teaching that Jesus gives his disciples about um, the end times and the second coming. Um, and it's as relevant for us today as it was for them then. It's something we're, we're waiting for, but we're called to be imminently expecting, uh, which is a, a, a difficult balance to pull off, to expect something any moment but also to know that there's a delay and we need to be ready for it for a long time. So, um, from the beginning of chapter 25, I want to read. Jesus says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. 
Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. So what can we take from this as, a, as an encouragement today to us? Um, well, uh, the, the basic message of this is that we need to be prepared. Uh, we need to be prepared, we need to keep our lamps shining and burning for potentially a long time. We don't know. Um, so in that parable we can look at the bridegroom as representing Christ's coming. Uh, it's, it's imminent, they're expecting it any time, but there, there is also a delay. Uh, and the, the ten virgins there, they, they represent um, the Christian community. Uh, but also those who we have to say are are not are not called are not followed because uh, Jesus doesn't lose any of of his sheep um, and the, the lateness represented in that um, is the fact that the second coming is not going to be when we expect and there are two other parables um, in Matthew just before and immediately after this one which which also uh, illustrate this fact. Um, and uh, the rejection in this parable, where Jesus says to them, I do not know you. Uh, that's the final, final judgment. Um, the, the point is that grace, grace is available to us now. Um, we have taken hold of that. And after the bridegroom comes on that day when, when Jesus uh, does come and call his church and gather us to him, um, that grace can't be accessed anymore. So we really need to encourage people to, to access that now. Um, and in order to be able to do that, uh, we need to have our lamps filled. We need to be walking closely with Jesus uh, and be full of his Holy Spirit to encourage that. So if you're feeling despondent, at the moment, during another very long lockdown, the, the message here is is to to be ready, actually to fill to fill our lamp, to feed ourselves, uh, to have enough fuel in our our hearts and our souls to keep going. Uh, and the way we do that is through a a prayer life, building relationship with Jesus, uh, through a devotional life, reading the Word, again building our relationship with Him, understanding what He He wants from us and how He leads us and guides us, uh, and also through um, a life of serving, um, as we read in the book of James. Uh, faith needs to be accompanied by works, um, and at the moment serving opportunities are limited, uh, but I've been greatly served myself in this time by people's encouragement so I would encourage us to encourage one another because that's a great way to serve each other at this time to keep each other motivated and lifted uh, and focused on Christ who is coming at any moment um, so yeah the encouragement is to be be ready be prepared to keep keep drawing on Jesus um, uh, relationship with God speaking with him and listening to him uh, is is all important um, and we've got uh, opportunities to pray every day but next next Wednesday particularly we're gonna have a whole day of prayer uh, which Megan posted an update on the Facebook page about earlier so from 7 in the morning till 11 at night on the 10th of February, there will be a Zoom room open that you can book time in. And if you can't get on Zoom, uh, you, uh, you can pray wherever you are. But we want to make that a real uh, landmark in our calendars where we, we really do focus on prayer uh, 
and make that something that is the order of that day. But it should be part of our, our day every day. So that's my encouragement is just to keep, keep ready, keep ourselves topped up, filled up, ready to serve, ready to, uh, to do God's will. Um, Simon mentioned on Sunday, you know, the Great Commission um, is to go out into all the world and make disciples, uh, is to do the works that Jesus did. Uh, he came to preach the good news to the poor, uh, and that's what we're called to do too. So, just well, end in prayer uh, and bid you all a very good day. So, yeah, Lord Jesus, we do thank you for, for who you are for your character, Lord, and for the fact that you call us to be like you, uh, to, to model our lives on yours, Lord, a life of serving, a life of sacrifice, Lord, but a life of encouraging one another and seeing the lost saved. And Lord, we do pray you help us find creative ways of doing that at the moment, and also to be a great encouragement to our brothers and sisters in the church and also those who are not yet followers of you, Lord. Do help us to, to lead people to you by our conduct and our behaviour. Let us be those good servants, Lord, who are ready. Ready for when you come and ready for when you call. Amen. So, yeah, thanks again for tuning in. hope that is an encouragement. Have a great day and I do hope I see you all soon.